These are seeds, small, apparently insignificant, armor-plated structures. Seeds are humble capsules, but inside them, hidden in this apparent simplicity, the life of the jungles of the world strongly beats. The Earth is, to date, the only planet in the known universe that houses life. But life, something we still do not understand in its incredible complexity, is not a linear, singular and absolute phenomenon, but rather an infinite series of circumstances that come together to create the miraculous balance giving pulse and continuity to the heartbeat of the planet. We are beginning to understand that the Earth behaves like a living organism, a fabulous complex being composed of thousands of species, ecosystems and physical and chemical, geological and atmospheric balances. Even the smallest beings play a role of incalculable value, and that is both the greatness and the fragility of our world. However inexhaustible life seems, it depends on structures and small beings, millions of tiny pillars that constitute the foundations of life, turning our planet into a rarity among the stars, a blue patch in the endless darkness of the cosmos, a living world in the dead immensity of space. Our species is experiencing unstoppable growth. Every day we are changing the world, adapting it to our needs, altering our natural parameters in such a way that even our biology, our animal essence, which out of some kind of complex we stupidly ignore, is suffering the consequences. There are now over 6,000 million of us, and by the middle of the century, it is calculated that there will be 3,000 million more. This makes us a destructive force comparable to the great cataclysms that caused the massive extinctions of prehistory. We demand that our needs be met immediately. We are the only species which, instead of adapting to its surroundings, is capable of altering them in order to adapt them to our needs. And this, which has permitted growth and expansion never before experienced by any species, has turned us into the greatest threat for our planet. We are changing the world at a speed never before seen since the time it was created. What began as small alterations have turned into drastic changes on a worldwide scale. Changes that are altering the landscape, extinguishing species, making entire ecosystems disappear and changing the composition and properties of our atmosphere. And the Earth is starting to show signs that it's reaching the limit of its capacity to resist. lies dead in the interior of the Amboseli National Park in southern Kenya. The park wardens remove its tusks. This is a measure that avoids the illegal traffic in ivory, a trade which, until it was banned in 1989, accounted for 80% of all the tusks sold in the world. The demand in Asian countries is a permanent threat for the elephants, a demand only held in check by an absolute ban on this trade. 
Even so, there is an unfinished war in which important battles have been won, but the enemy refuses to lower its guard. Countries like Zimbabwe, South Africa, China and South Korea apply pressure to be able to sell their surpluses. But as soon as even a tiny amount is legalized, the poachers will take advantage and invade the market with tusks obtained in illegal killings. The case of the elephants is the best example of the struggle for survival of the threatened species. They are Pacific giants, but their size and their complex social structure have become a tragedy. In a land of limited resources, herds of elephants confined in restricted areas can cause terrible devastation. The dry season is a period of want in the savannas of East Africa. The majority of the herbivores migrate to higher lands in search of pasture, following a cyclical, annual and unalterable route. For thousands of years, the elephants did the same, following routes that were passed down from generation to generation. But today their migrations takes them out of the parks and their old routes now have new masters who cultivate them and protect them. The Maasai are not at all fond of the elephants. They are a cattle-rearing people who are beginning to cultivate the lands, and the elephants eat the pasture of their cows and destroy their crop fields. The new generations have forgotten the peaceful coexistence of centuries, the respect their ancestors felt towards these colosses of the savannah, and those who once shared the pastures have now become irreconcilable enemies. Today the elephants are, sadly, an anachronism in a world in which every square meter of land has an owner, and where their enormous food requirements have become a threat for farms, cattle and human populations. Their future, like that of so many other species in danger of extinction, now depends on the very same species that took their lands from them, killed their brothers to get their tusks, confined them in tiny strips of land where they are isolated, and so lose their genetic vigor. This elephant wounded by a Maasai came to die in the park. It was perhaps seeking out the only free hectares we have left them to find its final rest there. <laughs> 